Hello and welcome to another episode in this self-hosting series. Today we're going to be taking a look at Nextcloud. Nextcloud is a very popular piece of software. It uh, is an alternative to something like Google Drive or also OwnCloud. It's a place to host your files, your, your calendar, your contacts, and a whole lot more through uh, plugins or apps as they call them. And I do not have Nextcloud installed right now, so we're going to start with that first. And like I have mentioned in other videos, I like these Linux server containers. So we're going to grab that one here quick. I'm just going to copy the Docker Compose info. And now we will log into or SSH into our server here. All right, and now we just need to make the necessary changes. Save and start it up. Isn't it amazing how easy it is to get these things up and running with Docker? Alright, so this might take a little while before it starts up and is ready. So we'll just wait on it. So I, I myself do not use Nextcloud. I used to use it. It used to be right over here in my uh, dashboard, but I've since replaced it with SyncThing for synchronizing files between my devices and phone and File Browser, which is just a, a very fast file browser, in the web-based file browser. I'll show you that while we're waiting on Nextcloud here. Still not ready. So, yeah, I mean, look at how fast that is. And it uh, does use pictures and PDFs and all that type of stuff. It's very fast and efficient. And the one thing I like, uh, and, and the, the biggest determining factor why I changed from Nextcloud over to this way of doing it is because I like having direct access to the files. In Nextcloud, everything's stored in a database you don't have direct access to the files you actually have to use the software to to get at the files and i prefer you know being able to get the get at the files through other means whether it's samba shares or using a, a web-based file manager or through ssh or something else i don't want to have to use the uh, next cloud software to get at the file but anyways, that's why I switched from Nextcloud, but we're doing a video on Nextcloud, so let's get back to that. And here I just refreshed it again, and it looks like it is ready now. We just have to accept the certification, and we are ready for setup. So we're going to pick a username and password. And here, um, this is the folder that we gave it. In the Docker Compose file, that's where it's going to store the database. Now it's going to, uh, we can do SQLite, which is what we're going to do. If we had like MariaDB up and running, we could choose that, or Postgres. So it has 
uh, a lot of availability as to what database backend you use. A lot of applications, they make you choose uh, between these two usually with this being as another option. And so it is nice to see that they give you the option of all three here. So now we can click uh, finish up, finish setup. And we'll leave this checked here where it says install recommended apps, calendar, contacts, talk mail, and collaborative editing. <coughs> Here we are greeted with our introduction, Nextcloud Hub. And this just gives you a little tour or walkthrough, I suppose, of all the features and reasons why you should use Nextcloud. And here we are also greeted with the dashboard, which this part is new to me. When I started using Nextcloud, it's basically just uh, this file manager here is what you were greeted with and this photos. There's some other plugins. Now there is just so much available for Nextcloud. It's it's a little overwhelming. I I fear it's it's getting to the, the tipping scale of getting more on the bloated side. But uh, for now, it, it doesn't look like they force too much on you with the default installation. So that's that's still good to see. You got your basic dashboard files, photos, and that's it. If you want to add more, you can. Uh, set status. So, so yeah, because I've, I'm not very familiar with some of these new features, I'm not going to be too much help to comment. I have no idea what this would even be for needed. I guess in a multi-user system, it's a way to see statuses of the other users is what I'm going to go out on a limb and guess. Uh, we can also set location for weather. But let's move over to files because this is what most people are going to be using it for is look for a, a file hosting solution to replace something like Google Drive. So it looks like it comes with some default files in here for you to click on and, and look through to see how it works. It can also play videos. It can open PDF files. very nice also has drag and drop capabilities so if I go over here grab a picture and drag it over into the browser drop it you can see it upload right there and it is ready to to load up so it's very quick and fast and again this is running on uh, a slower piece of hardware the, the original rock 64 so I mean this this thing is a single board computer it is five or six years old it's it's older it's it's slow and it still seems to be running pretty decently for for what it is running on um, there's some other settings down here so you can see there's a, a web dev uh, back end so you can connect web dev clients to it and we have a recent menu option favorites shares photos this also does support right clicking so you can right click on a file add the favorites look at details rename although none of these seem to be working for me let's see okay that worked mover copy details all right here we go now things are working comment sharing versions and add to favorites so that just threw it in this favorites folder move from favorites I put it back then you would think it would yes delete file and share file All right, and then there's also a photo gallery. So this takes all the photos that it has in your folders and just creates a nice little gallery for you to look through. You can see some of these other ways to filter through your media over here. Your photos, your videos, favorites, your folders, 
locations. Looks like this requires a separate app, the Maps app. So yeah, let's get into that. Actually, let's go to our settings first, take a look through the different settings that we can configure. So here we have your personal information. You can upload a profile picture. You have your name, email address, phone number, uh, mailing address, website, Twitter, and it shows you what group you're in there. Security, we can change our password. We can set up password list authentication. And this shows you the devices and sessions. And here there's a whole slew of different notifications that you can set. I'm not going to go through all of those. Here it just looks like a page with links for um, different clients. And yes, this um, another, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but you can connect your calendar and your contacts to it as well. So instead of using Google Drive and then also using Google Contacts and Google um, Calendar. You can really get yourself away from a lot of those Google services by using something like Nextcloud and hosting it yourself. It's a big step away from Google. So if that's something that you're interested in, Nextcloud is a really good way to get started with that process. And once we get into some of the plugins, Nextcloud, you'll see how much more Nextcloud can do. Here we have some different themes that we can set. Let's enable the dark theme. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go. That looks better. All right, and this is um, for enabling the sharing. And be honest with you I've not used this so I'm not I do not really feel comfortable commenting on how this works but this is for sharing files with other users flows I'm not sure what I should be seeing there and privacy. All right, let's move on to the next section. This was the user section. We'll move on to the administration section. We have an overview page here. It tells us the version. Um, right there, it's doing check, make sure everything's up to date and secure. Looks like we have some issues here. This is saying that uh, SQLite is not the best backend. We should probably be using like MariahDB. Hmm, that, I'm not sure we would have to Google how to fix that. And also with a few of these other things. I'm surprised that there is so many issues with this Linux server I.O. Um, container. We'd have to Google a, a few of those to figure out how to resolve them. We're not going to do that. If I was going to continue using Nextcloud, I would take a look and, and figure that out. But as I said, I've recently switched to just using uh, sync thing and just a web browser or a web file manager. All right, support, basic settings, background jobs, set to cron, and set an email server for like alerts or notifications. 
announcements and collaborative tags all right let's move on sharing i mean there i, I can't go through all these settings here let's see if there's anything that just stands out two-factor authentication that might be good to enable server-side encryption these are some good settings that, to take a look at password policy you can set password policy uh, brute force ip whitelist and OAuth 2.0 clients all right theming and groupware we won't get into those Let's move on to just to taking a look at some of the different plugins that are available. So it does look like quite a lot is installed by default. Um, but that's likely because we checked that box you know, in the initial setup process. I'm kind of curious to see how much of this would be installed if we left that box unchecked. But I'd say, looking just a cursory glance here through this, most people are going to want these things installed. Let's see what else is available, though. These are all different categories over here. Let's see featured apps. Oh, these are the ones that are mostly installed already. Let's see what this one is. Let's see what some of these are that aren't installed here. Group folders. Restrict login to IP address. Let's see some social media stuff for sharing. But yeah, all right. So we click on files category. Let's look at all the different apps or plugins that are available for this. It's kind of crazy how much this is taken off. I mean, there's only Office plugin that you can install, uh, mind map. I think I saw, what did I see down here? That transmission, whiteboard. It's crazy. Games, not too much in that category. Integration. Dropbox integration. That might hold some interest for some folks. Maps, Keywib, Only Office again. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It is. Let's see monitoring, notification type plugins. Let's see what we got for multimedia. We got audio players. On our image viewers, face recognition, we can add into it. Um, GPX edit. News, phone sync, podcasts, phone tracking. Office and text. Let's see what we got in there. Calendar, contacts. Documents, electric signature or electronic signatures, ebook e reader. And this is a one stop shop. I mean, that's that's great for some people, but it's also the reason why I wanted to kind of get away from it. It's a little too much in one solution. It's, but it's it's nice that it's plug-in based because that means you can pick and choose as much as you want. And this this is uh, like I was saying before. If you're looking to move away from Google services, Nextcloud is going to be the best way to get your feet wet in doing that. Let's take a look in security here. A lot of different authentication solutions. All right, social and communication. Let's 
So it's more sharing on social networks and whatnot. Tools, what do we got in here? So that dashboard, and that's, that's included in here. Let's see, right click. See, like even a feature like that is a plugin that you could turn off and not have right click. That, you know, it's the, the modular approach of Nextcloud is a very lovely thing. A lot of my favorite applications take that modular plugin based approach. So you can refine it as much as you want or make it as extensible as you want. It's completely up to the user. Yeah, it looks like we looked through as, as many of those as we care to look through. So yeah, Nextcloud is a great solution for self-hosting your own files. Um, it's a great alternative to take the steps to get away from Google services such as Google Drive and Google Calendar and Google Contacts. Um, there are other ways to host your files. As I was talking, I've started going with uh, just getting all the way down to basics with Samba shares and using sync thing to sync files and a web-based file manager. But for somebody starting out and wanting to have a more complete solution that's easy to set up, Nextcloud is a great way to go. So I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.